Hello friends, my name is Vesna Chef. You can refer to me using she and her pronouns. I'm excited to be wrapping up our project for this week. We have, we're going to take a look at some of the other things that we did and then bring them together into our final piece. Um, but as usual, we're going to start with a little bit of movement to get us warmed up before we get into our drawings. So find some space. Make sure you don't bump into anything in your area. And we're going to do some balancing exercises. So take your arms and put them out straight as you can. And then we're going to slowly lift one leg off of the floor. So it's hard to see, but in a second, you're going to see my toes. And then wave with your toes. <laughs> and then bring your leg down and slowly put it back down on the ground. All right, and we're going to do the other side. So you can take a deep breath in. And slowly lift your other leg. All the way up. Straighten it out. Wave with your toes. And bring it back down. Really slowly, trying not to fall over. Making sure that we are finding balance as we do this. Go ahead and lift your arms up over your head. Stretch up really high. You can come up onto your tiptoes. So from here up on my toes, and I can touch the ceiling in this room. Um, <laughs> you're going to stretch up as high as you can and then bring it down. And slowly roll it up like this. And you can shake it out a little bit. Okay, I want to get into our project because we're going to do a little bit more than we usually do and I don't want us to run out of time. We're going to start with setting up our drawing surface. So I have my clipboard. You might have a table that you're working on. Um, you're going to get your drawing surface and we're going to get a piece of paper. You can use a sketchbook page or just a blank piece of paper like I have here. We're going to put it on our drawing surface. So we're going to do the same thing we did in our first session, which is to do a blind drawing. If you can't remember what that is, take a second to think about it. So we're going to be looking at the object that we're drawing, and we're not going to look at our paper as we're doing the drawing. I'm going to put mine down like this and show you what it looks like from the perspective of looking at me as I'm doing this. So I have my paper right here on the table and my body is going to be turned away from the paper and I'm gonna be looking at my hand. So I'm not gonna look over at my page, I'm just gonna be focused on my hand. I'm gonna find a spot in the middle of my paper. I'm gonna start right about there. I'm gonna make sure that I keep my pencil on the page so I don't lose track of where I am. So I'm not going to be looking at it, so it's going to be hard to know where I'm on the page if I lift my pencil up. So I'm going to keep my pencil down on the paper, and I'm going to make sure I capture as many details as I can of my hand. So we're going to spend two minutes doing this drawing. On your marks, get your pencils ready. Make sure you're set up so you can look just at your hand and not at your page. Get set, and draw. Remember the breathing we did at the beginning. That's really important to remember, especially during this exercise, because it can be kind of stressful to not be able to look at your paper. You don't know what you're drawing or how it's gonna look, and that can be kind of stressful. But if we breathe as we go through it, it helps us to remember that it's okay. And that we can do drawings that are a little bit stressful and still have a good time as we do them and learn something from them as we do. So I'm following the details of my hand. I'm noticing I have a lot of wrinkles in my hand. And I'm following sort of the outline, but also trying to move in to get some of the details that are inside of the outline of my hand. I'm 
I'm noticing what shapes I'm also seeing. There's a lot of different shapes even within the shape of my hand. Each little segment kind of looks like a rectangle to me. So I want to try and include that in what I'm drawing on my paper. Not sure how it's going to turn out, but we'll see. Okay, we have 30 more seconds. So keep going, you're doing a really great job. If you did look at your paper, that is okay. Just turn back to your hand and keep looking at it and keep going with your drawing. If you lifted up your pencil, that's also okay. Just put it back down on the paper, wherever you think you are, and keep going from there. Okay. Pencils up and take a look at your drawing. If we have an opportunity to share all of these together, I would really love to see how everyone's turned out. This is how mine turned out. I was able to capture the segments of my fingers, which I think is pretty a pretty cool detail that I wanted to add in there. So, we have our first blind drawing. This blind drawing gets us to focus on the thing that we're drawing as opposed to the drawing itself, which can be helpful for drawing what we see in the world. So we are going to add to this drawing. We're gonna stay on the same piece of paper as opposed to switching papers like we've done before. We're gonna to add to this drawing. And the thing that we're gonna add right now are some scribbles. So remember in the second chapter, we did some scribbles across the whole page. We're gonna do that again, but we're gonna have this informing how we do our scribbles. So you can do whatever scribbles you want to, filling the page or doing parts of the page. And then after two minutes or one minute, we'll come back and see where our scribbles took us. Okay, one minute on the clock to begin your scribbles on your mark, get set. And go. So yours may look nothing like mine, and that's great. There are so many different ways in which you could be doing your scribbles. I'm just doing whatever feels good to me. You can be filling your page or you can be doing a kind of shape on your page, whatever you think feels nice or fits with what you are, what you have in mind. Okay. Go ahead and pause. And let's check back in to see where our drawings are. So I added some scribbles to mine. I felt like keeping some open space. That's just sort of how I feel. I kind of like paintings that, or drawings that have a lot of open space around them. I usually work with watercolor, so I can show you just a quick example of a watercolor piece that I like that has a lot of open space around it. So here is a watercolor painting that I've been working on for the past month or so. And I really like the openness of the space but having more complicated textures inside. So this happens to be of my uncle. Just an example of how you can have open space in your drawing and that you don't always have to fill the whole page in order to make a drawing that's complete. Okay, the next thing we're gonna add to our blind drawing and scribble drawing. We're turning this into our final piece. So we're gonna keep adding to this page and just see where it takes us. 
So in the second chapter, we went around the room and found three different objects, any objects we wanted to, and used those as part of our inspiration for our drawing. This time, we're going to find three more objects, but I would like you to find objects that represent something about who you are. Could be, for example, I like to paint, so I might grab a paintbrush because I feel like that shares a little bit about what it is that I like to do and a way in which I like to spend my time. If you really enjoy plants, maybe there's plants around that you might want to bring in for your object if you can move them. <laughs> um, so we're going to spend one minute just going around the room and seeing what objects we can collect that show a little bit of who we are. All right, I'm going to put one minute on the clock and turn on a little bit of music so it's not just quiet while we're finding our objects. Okay, go ahead and begin your search for your objects. back to from wherever you were collecting your objects and bring them in front of your drawing area. So I'm going to share with you the three objects that I found that and tell you a little bit about why I feel like they represent me. One of the objects I chose was this book called Soul of the Nation, Art in the Age of the Black Art in the Age of Black Power. Um, there's a lot of really amazing artists in this book. And it gives me a lot of inspiration as I am going about uh, drawing and painting. So one of the artists I'll share with you, just to give an idea of things that are in this book, is this artist, Vermeer Bearden. He does collage works that are representative of everyday Black life um, from when he was growing up and where he lived. I like how expressive it is and how you can see a lot of different people in here all doing different things to show the complexity of, uh, of, a, of a group of people. So I really enjoy his work. And I also like collage because you can mix and match different things that you find, kind of like we're doing in this project right now, um, to create a final picture. So just one example of why I like this book and why I feel like it influences the work that I do. My other object is a paintbrush and these flowers that are in this jar. I feel like I maybe grabbed a couple extra objects, <laughs> um, but they're all in this jar, so I figured I could use them. But I really like how these dried flowers look, and this is a paintbrush that I really like to use. And then I have a small painting that I did, um, which is called Dear Apology, and it talks about equity and what an apology should look like in order for it to be really geared towards equity, which means treating people um, in a way that supports them and that they would like to be treated. So I have this piece um, also to represent who I am and to bring it into my drawing. So I have my objects here. I'm gonna move them to the side and you should, hopefully you have your objects also. You wanna set them up so you can see them and your drawing at the same time. So I'm gonna put mine right here. Your objects are gonna be different, but as long as they're representative of who you are, 
that's what we're going for. Everyone's going to have a different drawing when we're done, and it's going to reflect the things that you enjoy and that you want to see represented in the world. So for me, these objects help me do that. So I'm going to scoot over so you can see a little bit of my drawing as well as the objects that I have here. So I'm going to, like we did before, except we're building on this same page that we started on, we're going to use our objects for inspiration and add them in ways that feel nice to our final piece. So I might add a flower into this area as to like show an extension of the hand maybe and think about how I'm going to incorporate Soul of a Nation, that book of artists in here somehow, and maybe the paintbrush somewhere and this piece that I have. Um, so I'm going to give us four minutes to work on this because this is our final project, bringing together all the ideas that we have worked on so far. And I'm going to put music back on. So go ahead and get yourself set up and you can get started as soon as you are ready. We have four minutes on the clock. Go ahead and go.
Go ahead and wrap up your drawing wherever you are at. Now the music we're listening to, by the way, is um, music that I made with one of my friends who is a producer. Um, I'm a musician also, so I was just playing some of my own um, beats to move us along through the project. I kind of like listening to instrumentals um, as I'm drawing, just as a way to keep something going on sort of like in the background and to let me really like zone in and focus on what it is that I'm, that I'm working on. So here is how my project has come together. So I have the blind drawing that I did of my hand, which I feel like really speaks to how it integrates into the Soul of a Nation um, book, which I incorporated here, along with the flower and emotive mark movements that I did coming along here. So I might go in and add a little bit more just to fill in this area here and create a little bit more structure down here on the bottom. Um, but I also incorporated a little bit of the paintbrush back in here. So this is what I'm going to use and keep going with um, until I get it to a place where I feel like it represents a lot of who I am and the ideas that I have and the things that I like to do. Um, I hope your final projects are turning out really great and I'm excited to be able to see them hopefully at some point. Feel free to keep working on this um, and remember that putting together a drawing can be as simple as gathering things that are around you, bringing them together and drawing based on what it is that you see in those objects and what they make you think of and what they make you feel. Um, so here we have our collaborative sort of self-portrait based on objects we found. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.